Okay, today I want to talk about a different way that we can write fetch calls. So this is a different syntax that you can use when writing fetch, then, then catch. Um, and it all has to do with the way promises work and the way promises are put together and the then method. So I've got a standard one here to start with. Um, I'm using my JSON placeholder. I call to that to get back all of this data that's being displayed in the browser. So we pass in the URL to the fetch, we get the response object, we extract the JSON from the response object. This is also a promise that gets sent on to the next method, so the next then method. It will then write out the data. And that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just writing out all of this data that's coming back from the call. If an error happened anywhere along this chain, so with the fetch inside the first then, inside the second then, if an error happens anywhere in there, it all gets routed down to the catch. And that's great. That's wonderful. It makes it very easy for us to do error handling to have it once at the end. So how does this work? Well, with a promise, here's my function right here. This is my asynchronous task. When you create a promise, you're creating a wrapper around a function. The function needs to accept two parameters. One is the resolve function. One is the reject function. So these are sitting inside the promise object, and I can call either one, the resolve or the reject, and it will then route it to the then or the catch. But it's not just routing it to the then and the catch. This does work. So here, let me just comment this fetch out, and I'm going to put a couple of console logs in here. Okay. Resolve. So this is working. It's calling this asynchronous task right here. And the only thing I'm doing inside of there is I'm calling resolve. That means I'm routing it to the then. Great. If I call reject, as you would expect, I get the error catch. So it's coming down here and running this part. But the then methods are capable of accepting two functions, the same as this. So here we're just giving the names and we're calling those. Inside of the then, I can put two functions like this. So we can say, I'm going to call this first method, or I'm going to call a different one right here. And let me put that inside of there. Okay, so now I'm calling reject, but it's not routing it down to the catch. Because I put two functions inside the then, the first one is the positive one, the second one is the negative one, and it never gets down to the catch. So what does this mean for fetch? Well, it means that I can interrupt the process, the then, 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 then catch chain. I can interrupt it at any point to say, you know what? If there's an error that happened at this point, I don't want to jump to that catch at the very end. Maybe I want to do something slightly different. I can interrupt that flow. So let me comment this one out and let's do a fetch where we're using this approach. So I can call my fetch URL, same as I was doing up above. And inside my then, I'm going to have the two things. I'm going to get my response object and this function. I'm going to check and say, you know what? If the response is not okay, I'm going to throw an error and it's going to be the response status text. If it does work, then I'm going to return the JSON that I'm extracting. So the same as we were doing in that original call. Now, for this to run, it means that the fetch itself did work. Something did come back from the server. Now, if something didn't come back from the server, I can still come down here and say, let's say console.warn, it was a network error. All right, so if the fetch fails, we get this. Inside of here, right now, I'm throwing an error. This will also be routed to the catch. 
So if the network fails, or the response was not okay, either of those two things, I'm coming down here. That's what we're at right now. So we run this. Um, I'm not writing out anything if it works. So because I'm getting nothing here, it means that this catch is not running. But remember, we can do that second thing here. I can now split this out and say, you know what, if there was a network error, I'm going to do something different. So I'm going to add this second function right here. This becomes my first level catch. Call it our first interrupt. And we're going to say at this point, this is my network error. And my second then is still going to be able to take the data that's coming from the response.json. Here's that data coming back. Right there, we've got all the data that came back from the server. So we fetched, the network worked. There was no failure with the fetch itself. That means the resolve gets called. Inside the resolve, if I didn't get a 200 response, the HTTP status wasn't 200, it wasn't okay, that would now come down here. And we can say that this is now reserved for this failure. With the response failing, or the response not being okay, we're catching it here. If the fetch fails, it's going to be routed down into here. So this is the fetch failing. And we still have this working right here. And I still have opportunity to do something else. Maybe talk to the database to get cached data. You know, I can use my index DB or something like that. But now I've got this ability inside of the then where I can have a, hey, it worked, hey, it didn't. Resolved, rejected from the first step. I could do that again in here. I could have two. And it would only deal with problems coming from this step right here. So the failure of response.json, if it failed to convert that, that would be here. Maybe the file that you got back wasn't a JSON file. Maybe it was an XML file. So this would handle that error. And so on and so on. We have the ability to put multiple conditions inside of the then. A response and a reject. And they only pertain to the previous then method or the original promise. Because every one of these thens is returning a promise. Which means it's got a resolve and a reject. And that's why we have the two of them here. So I hope that opens up the possibilities in your mind of what you can do with fetch and what you can do in the then method, just to have a little bit more control over what you're doing. If you have any questions about that, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.